in the last class we discussed about two phase locking technique where we have discussed about discussed about the locks okay we discussed about two types of locks one is the shared lock another is the 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 right lock or where basically in the shared lock or the read lock uh, the locks are being shared that means the document uh, the item can be uh, read by more than uh, one access operation whereas in case of the exclusive lock or the right lock it is basically is uh, hold exclusively by the um, by that particular for write operation by transaction okay so that is how the exclusive lock works when a particular item is uh, locked with the exclusive lock no other uh, transaction can read that particular data item or write the, 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 the data item so it's not accessible to any other transactions than the uh, transaction which is holding the particular lock whereas in case of shared lock the other transaction have the read to access the uh, to uh, to have the read lock or the shared lock but no other transaction can write that particular item at that moment of time so this is what we have discussed and then two phase locking technique also we have discussed the algorithm and uh, but this is all what we know is that this particular that locking mechanism is used to uh, to achieve the serializability of the transactions right that is the schedule is schedule becomes realizable with the locking techniques two phase locking technique basically achieves that another way to achieve serializability is to use the timestamps so timestamp is nothing but actually the time when a transaction has started so you can say a timestamp is assigned a time as assigned to the transactions and so the operations in the transactions are are ordered according to the, those timestamps so any other transaction so in a schedule the older transactions will have the permit or, or have the uh, authority to get the elements or get the shared data uh, data items before the younger one so that order is maintained according to the transactions okay transaction maintains the timestamp order so it is not mandatory that the, the time has to be specified there but any uh, monotonically increasing variable can be used as timestamp basically timestamp indicates the age of the transaction in the schedule okay so basically you can it can be any numeric data or numeric value which can be used as a timestamp so uh, timestamp based algorithm basically uses this timestamp to serialize the execution of the concurrent transactions so basically the timestamp based algorithm uses the timestamp value okay let us discuss about the basic timestamp ordering um, ordering algorithm or, or ordering technique you can say so when a transaction p issues a write item x operation okay so what it needs to check about to maintain the order of the timestamp now here you can see this one the transaction p issues the write item x now before going into this particular detail let us know that there is the here the ts means timestamp t means the transaction which has issued the particular access operation here the write item x okay and read item ts is the read timestamp that is assigned to that particular x data item that means the last transaction which has read the data item okay so we must know that the uh, the higher the timestamp means the younger is that particular transaction okay so similarly write ts is the uh, timestamp value of the last transaction which has written the data item okay now when a particular transaction t issues the right item x access operation for the particular shared variable x it checks for whether the read timestamp value of the earlier transaction which has read that particular item is greater than the present transaction which is trying to write that item okay or if there is if any other transaction which has a higher timestamp value has already written that transaction so if this value is higher the read tsx and write tss it means a younger transaction has modified that element before this item has got access to it to write it to write the items so that means the timestamp ordering has been violated so in that case it basically roll back that particular transaction and rejects the operation okay so that is what either it aborts or roll back and rejects the operation if, because the timestamp ordering will be there only if the older 
transaction have accessed that particular item either for read or write. That only a younger transition than write that particular item. Okay. If the condition is if this particular condition does not exist, that means the timestamp ordering is there, then the transition T is this given access to that particular um, operation to the transition T and it performs the write TS operation and then it sets its timestamp, its own timestamp to the write TS value. Okay, that is the write TS value. So next time any other transition that comes and access to, tries to access that particular time uh, that particular uh, share the file then X then it will find its write TS set to the value of this particular transition which has written it. Okay. So mm. similarly when a transition T issues a read item X operation, again it checks for for any other transition uh, which has actually set its uh, ti right timestamp value to that particular share that uh, X which it is trying to read. Okay, so it, if it finds that the right timestamp value is greater than the present uh, transition timestamp which the particular transition holds at that moment of time, then that means the younger transition has written that particular data item. So in that case, it violates the timestamp ordering and that's why it is the, uh, it will basically abort or roll back and it will not perform the operation. See one thing here, for writing operation, the timestamp, it, wa it was checking for both read timestamp value and write timestamp value. This is because the read and write are, B are a config operations with the write item x okay whereas uh, so that is why it needs to check both read and write timestamp by some younger transactions that is uh, that is why it has to check that way but in this case it is a it will not it is not checking for read read one because it is trying to read that particular item x so any other younger transaction also if it has written or if it, if it has read that particular data item then there is no problem in reading because read and read are not the conflict operations but some other transaction, if it is younger transaction is, has written that particular item, then it's a conflict operation. So that's why in that case, in this case, it will violate the ordering. Only in case of the write timestamp, not in the read timestamp. But in this case, it will violate the timestamp, even if it has, the other transaction has read it, because it, it was trying to write it, okay? So uh, that is, we know that, you know, it, it has to be same data item, the, uh, write operation and the read operation has to be performed by uh, the um, two different uh, transactions then it becomes the conflicting one okay so we have to look for that the conflict operations which conflicting operations which are trying to perform the operations so in this case it is only perform it only checking for right timestamp value if the right timestamp is higher then it is a it is a younger operation uh, younger transaction which has actually written that particular item okay so it will not be allowed to do that, allowed to read the item X and it will roll back because it is going to violate the ordering of the timestamp. Now if this condition is not, not true, that it will basically, that means if write timestamp is less, less than TS, less than or equal to TST, then it is, it will basically uh, going to perform the read operation and it will set its read timestamp value, its own read, read timestamp value to the read underscore TS field of the shared variable shared data item x okay so uh, as we know that every data item has the uh, two fields you know which is one is the write ts write timestamp and the read timestamp so it will set its value to the read timestamp after reading is completed okay there is another variation of the basic timestamp ordering algorithm that is called as the strict timestamp ordering so what is strict timestamp ordering that is if a particular transaction t is trying to write or trying to perform the write operation on a shared variable x a shared data item x okay so it is trying to do the write item x access operation then it it will check for each timestamp value the transaction timestamp value with the read timestamp the of the x okay if this timestamp value is uh, its own timestamp value is greater than the read timestamp x then it will delay its operation till the other transaction which is basically uh, have already read that particular timestamp value time, uh, that particular item x or has written that particular item x to terminate that means 
even if it is transition is true, that means what? The timestamp t of the particular transition is younger. There is no timestamp ordering uh, violation. Okay, timestamp ordering is okay. But still, it will basically wait till the other transaction which has written or or read that particular transaction to terminate. That means either commit or approve. If it has committed, means the changes that has been done to that particular item X has been uh, has been permanently saved or it is if it is aborted means it will be rolled back. So basically it provides a uh, safest way of dealing with the uh, the transaction values. So it is basically going to give always going to give the correct results. So, so this strict timestamp means it has to wait for the other time transition to complete even if the timestamp ordering is being followed. That is if the timestamp transition t values, the transition t timestamp is greater than the read timestamp tsx means it is it is younger transition, it is the, the, the transition t is younger than the other transition t does which has actually read the value. So there is no, value, um, no violation of the timestamp ordering. Still it will have to wait till the transition t does terminates, that means commits or about. So second case similar to in the uh, similarly in the uh, read uh, item x that is the one it, it tries to perform the access operation read item on that particular uh, data item x then it is then also it will first check that its own transition timestamp value to the uh, timestamp which is being stored in that particular data item that's the right timestamp okay and then it will uh, it will even if this is correct if this particular value is correct that means that is a younger transaction than the other one the which has already written and then also it will delay its uh, delay its operation this operation read item x reading operation of the shared value till the other transaction which has actually written the particular item to commit or abort so one thing you just notice here this when it is it was trying to perform a write item x operation here and it was it has waited it has checked for the read timestamp value. Why it is so? Because the writing here is, you know, in this particular transition T has actually performed a write item and it was checking for it because they are the con conflicting operations. So it is just to uh, this, uh, the, um, the, for this particular condition, uh, they, it, has, it has to actually, um, this, uh, it will basically check for the read timestamp because of that. Uh, the even the right is also conflicting, but uh, that it will check for the read item, read timestamp value. Similarly, here also, see here, it was trying to perform a read operation, it has, it has checked for the right timestamp value. If this condition is false, obviously, there is the earlier method will be followed, the, the one that we have discussed uh, in the previous slide, that is, the, there is no question of going forward, it will basically um, abort <coughs> or uh, it will basically abort and the rollback, okay, and it will not perform the operation. So, even when, uh, in spite of that particular thing, like you know, wh wh um, uh, that particular condition that is not again repeated here in this particular strict timestamp uh, ordering method described here, but over and above that particular condition, this condition also requires that it waits till the other transaction, even uh, other transaction to. Uh, to terminate, that means either commit or abort. Okay, so this condition is over and above the other condition where the transition has to roll back. Okay, means the younger transition which is trying to read. If this condition is suppose the reverse one, that is less than or equal to this particular item, then basically in both cases there is no question of going forward. Okay, so it will basically uh, it will basically terminate in that case. Now, coming, coming to another topic, which is actually regarding granularity of data items and multi-granularity locking. So, we know that uh, all the data items that are considered for the concurrency control techniques are considered to be the granular data item we discussed earlier. So, this granularity term can be, uh, you know, with uh, different range or different size of the data items can be considered uh, to form one granular data item. So, uh, we can consider this to be the name data items, okay, like this, the name data items, okay. So this name data items can be a database record, 
a size fill uh, that is the fill value of the database record so this one is the smallest we can think of because it is only one field of the record similarly another uh, a name that item can be as large as the dix block or the whole file or the whole database okay so uh, we consider the data items as the name data items so this granularity level that is the smaller or the larger uh, that affects the performance or the concurrency control mechanism of the database to different degrees okay so so the size of the data item is often called the data item granularity okay so fine granularity basically refers to the smaller item sizes like field size okay coarse granularity refers to the large item sizes uh, like you know the entire block or file okay so now what is the trade off between this choosing of this different granularity level the different sizes of the name data items for this concurrency control operations okay so suppose for example let us consider a large data item size as the granularity level okay so uh, uh, just consider a disk block uh, as the as the granularity level chosen the larger the data item size the lower is the degree of concurrency permitted that is uh, you can see here this statement here that is the larger the data item size is the lower the degree of con concurrency the lower is the degree of concurrency okay so for example you just consider if suppose a block is considered to be the granularity level of the uh, of that particular uh, concurrency, concurrency control mechanism so in that case the uh, what happens is that particular transaction t needs to block the entire block um, needs to lock entire block if it wants to get hold of a record b for certain operation okay so suppose the record b belongs to the block x and the transition t needs the record b for certain operation so transition t has to lock the entire block x entire block x for that particular uh, record b okay in the meantime suppose there is another transition which is s which requires a record c okay that also resides in the same block x okay now c also belongs to the block x now transition s wants for some operation the access to the record c but transition s does not want b but still the transition has x uh, s has to wait till the lock is released by the earlier transaction that is the transition t okay so uh, because it is the granularity level is the block level here so entire block is already locked by the transition t so transition s has to wait for transition t okay so this basically forced to wait transition x and this leads to the uh, lowering of the degree of concurrency right if the uh, granularity level would have been in the record uh, record level that is the uh, each record would have different locks then the transaction uh, this uh, this one transaction s could have proceed with the record c because then in that case the transaction t the earlier transaction would have only uh, locked the record b and then the transaction s which required the record c could have proceed simultaneously but that did not happen because the generally level or the is the uh, block level okay so uh, that is what actually uh, that is what uh, actually means here that is if the larger is the size of granularity but basically it reduces the degree of concurrency okay now on the other hand if the smaller is the data item size <laughs> if the granularity level is the lower one that means the smaller data item the item size are the smaller then it will basically have more down number of item to be stored in the database and as you know each of the data item is associated with a write timestamp as well as read timestamp to hold the timestamp below the transactions which has either read it or read uh, or written it okay so uh, for those values 
the, there will be basically the lock manager has to store uh, a large number of active locks because the item size are items are, um, there are more number of items now because of the smaller size of the data items okay so and obviously there will be more lock and unlock operations will be performed so that means there will be higher overhead okay so as there will be more storage space will be required because read there will be every item will be associated with read ts timestamp as well as write timestamp so there are the overhead overhead is more so given this trade off between the size that is the larger and the lower size of the data item so obvious question is what should be the best item size okay what should be the best item size so in that case the it is basically the answer is that it depends it depends on the type of transaction involved okay so what type of transaction is it depends on that so basically we cannot say that larger item size is better or lower item size is better okay it depends on the type of operations that transaction is going to perform now for example if a typical transaction accesses the small number of records suppose few records only it requires then it is better to have the granularity be at the record size or a, a, at the one record at a time okay so if only it has to have a, a small you have to access a small number of records if the transactions do not access a large number of records but if a transaction in the in this course of operation if it accesses large number of records then obviously the uh, the granularity level is better if it is considered at the block or file level okay because the every block or file will have multiple records in it so if a block or file is uh, locked at a particular moment of time then the transaction get access to all the records inside it because it accesses so many records frequently so this becomes beneficial so it depends on the trade off between the size of the item data item depends on the type of records the type of the uh, so the type of transaction that involves there okay what type of transactions are there do uh, to understand uh, this you know different level of that is the granularity level or the different sizes of granularity uh, it is better to understand this better to if we actually consider it to be a levels or the hierarchy of the granularity levels so multiple granularity level locking is basically is the is what this hierarchy means where uh, a particular uh, transaction can select any depending on the type of work it is going to perform it can select any of the item size from that hierarchy okay it can suppose uh, if the as uh, if the hierarchy at the base of the hierarchy is suppose the database itself then it can lock the entire database also to perform certain operations or if it do not want the entire database then it can go on down the hierarchy to lock a file or if and if it can go below that to lock a block or that below that it can go on to uh, lock a page or below that it can go on to lock the records so that way it uh, it can actually lock obtain the lock for different levels depending on the operations so uh, uh, for example suppose a database which maintains the lock level for different uh, hierarchies of the data items uh, locks for the different hierarchies of data items uh, depending on the granularity that is the uh, say there are two files okay we are just for illustration we are only consider two files there in the database so you can see here this database has two file f1 and f2 f1 has three um, some uh, n number of pages okay from 1 to n n number of pages similarly file 2 has the m number of pages and each of the pages has some records okay so each page has uh, some records similarly this page 2 has some record the nth page has some records so so when the database basically wants to obtain the lock it can obtain it can go down the hierarchy to obtain the lock uh, for a particular transaction depending on the, the work of the transaction the type of the transaction it can 
obtain a log for a, uh, any level of this particular hierarchy. It can obtain a log at the file level, it can obtain a log at the page level, it can go on, go down to obtain a log even at the record level. Okay, so <coughs> logs are provided in terms of hierarchy at any level in this particular tree. Okay, so this type of granularity is actually done for the multiple granularity level two phase locking protocol. Okay, so two phase locking protocol can be modified to have the lock capability at the multiple granularity levels. Okay, so basically it can the same protocol but the hierarchy lock can be obtained or the lock can be obtained from the at the hierarchical level so that much is about this particular uh, topic thank you